I've wrestled people who smelled like shit. Like literal, <laughs> like literal, like poop. So the last two years, uh, like two years ago, we did decent. I don't know, maybe like 150K for the year. And then um, last year, we did like 250K. Off, 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 off. The pill. All right, oh, you clap do it, claps. You do clap it for beat, claps. For the guests to get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I'm, we usually I'm just used to, I'm talk used to a little bit. Headphones. Yeah. I mean, it is a weird thing. Even when we first put it on, we were like, oh, hearing yourself is such a weird, mm. you know, like you take it. But you're not used to it to editing yourself or like listening to yourself it's on di- videos. It's, it's different when it's, it's live too. Yeah. I guess so. And especially it's, it's worse if there's a little bit of a delay. This yeah. is the longest intro we've ever taken. I did not intro. Welcome back to another episode of Off the Bill Podcast. <laughs> Today we are joined with our very close friend, Mr. Jacob Fu. Paco yeah, in the louder, moderator louder. seat as well. Louder. That's all you get. <laughs> you need to earn your class. Okay, fine. Um, for those of you who don't know, Jacob Fu is the brother of Josh Fu. Josh was with us for a little bit. Yeah. And we have... <laughs> Just kidding. Josh, <laughs> uh, Josh, Josh is his, uh, moved back to Atlanta, where you guys are from, right? Yep, he's back in Atlanta. Um, sorry, we make these kind of jokes usually yeah, off no. camera. And we have uh, Ryan Higa <laughs> in the moderator I'm introdu- seat. I have to You're introduce the moderator. you, though. You're the I'm moderator. In the host seat, sorry. All right, you can host it. No, I want to do that. I want to play Dude, with one the day. Thing. We should switch. I'm down. All right. Sorry. So Jacob's you here. Should. This is about Jacob. <laughs> you should. Switch. Dude, let's switch seats right now. I don't want to. <laughs> After the shishi break. Uh, yeah. So this is Jacob. <sighs> tell tell more about your so relationship. Jacob. Um. Well, let's talk about just. I guess we can talk about just. You can explain actually what you do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So okay. lazy. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, can t- I was going to talk about how we met and stuff, but we'll get into that later. Okay, we'll get into that later. Uh, do that but, first. Uh, I no, think it's really first. interesting. It builds know a know who Jacob is. Yeah, but it built, you telling your relationship builds the story. Jacob, just tell, just tell us. Okay, just say so, what you do. Uh, Esther and I, Esther's my wife, uh, we moved back to Vegas in February. Welcome so we back. live here now. Um, we run a travel blog full time. And for the past six years, we've been moving to a new city every year to write about the city yep. and the surrounding area. Nomads. Nomads, kind of. That's what a nomad is, right? Like Somebody yeah, who doesn't have a, tr- like, yeah. permanent no home. permanent yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is the longest they're you've been gypsies. in a place for a while. You guys are gypsies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, basically. And he's uh, pretty humble, but their blog is, like, one of the biggest, right? Yeah. Travel vlogs. Yeah, it's if it's, not the biggest travel blog. Not the biggest, but it's it's, it's the up biggest there. travel blog. It's up there. <laughs> yes, it is the biggest. Yeah, I'm just saying it's the local adventurer. Local right? adventurer. I don't normally read blogs, but like like you were saying, because I was asking, we were talking about this beforehand. Yeah. Um, I thought your fan base was just like, a, like a really small, dedicated, not small, but a very dedicated fan base. But you were saying that a lot of times it's, it's just people constantly coming in and checking out random articles and. Yeah, I mean, I think it's partly because of the way we built the blog. Um, when Esther started it, it was primarily because she couldn't find the information that she wanted. Uh-huh. Uh, so she's, neither of us are like, we're not great writers. We don't really like writing like uh, stories per se, but we like to find information and give that information to people. So that's kind of how the site was built. And so I think it's more of a resource than it is like people following Informal. our personal lives. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. What's so funny? What are you yeah, laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> All right. What are you I, laughing at? Jacob, we're cool, right? We're yeah, we're cool. good. All right. You know, if I throw out some some small burns here and there, then what do you, know. you do? Just what are you saying? Burn. <laughs> Just burn. Just let's keep moving on. Just keep moving. On. Yeah, yeah, I know, no, I know. I but no, because like last time with the Kevin thing, there's a lot of people who were like, I don't like that Paco's going after Kevin like that. They're being yeah, very protective. They're, they're probably not gonna defend me as much. But it was, they'll probably make they'll, they'll think you're you're a jerk or a dick or whatever. Oh, that's fine. I, mean, I think it was pretty apparent that you guys were joking. Yeah, I but there's some it out. people who are dumb. I think you just <laughs> you just get very offended by no, comments. I just get surprised that there are people you that get, you get pretty, dumb. You're pretty sensitive. I'm not. Yeah. I'm hard. It's, look at this body, dude. Ah, bro. I went to gym once this week. Um. With that being said, I guess we'll jump back into. I don't even remember because you nope, just well, started laughing. <laughs> um. I met about Jacob. What? Yeah, yeah, they were right. Going. I met yeah. Jacob, and I met you. Did I meet you on no, Internet Icon? No, it was the Icon? season after. I though. met uh, Jacob on Internet Icon, yep. a show that we did that was basically like American Idol, but for not YouTube. YouTuber. Yeah, I guess influencer. Yeah, it's for YouTubers. Yeah, at the time, especially. Um, and that's where I met Paco as well. 
but yep. the following season, we only did two seasons. Um, season and one he, was better. And, and, J- and Jacob was a finalist with his brother. No, he well, wasn't. I wasn't a he finalist. He wasn't a finalist. <laughs> <laughs> Third, Thanks. Place. Thanks. Third place. Third place. Yeah. Well, what did you get? I got fourth. Yeah. But, the following season. But we both got eliminated basically on the same episode. Right. The, the episode the one right before, before the, the finals. finals. Because right. yeah. season two had three finalists. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember if I voted to get rid of you guys or not. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. I don't know. I, I think it was Kasim. It might have been. It might have been. I don't think he liked us. Uh-huh. I think he liked Lana. And the Rydells were kind of a shoe in uh, Rydells were killing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Rydells were a shoe in so it was between us and Lana, yeah. and I think he just liked Lana better. PewDiePie didn't like me because he's a racist, uh, and, and he just hates me. Now that's we're gonna screen cap that, put that in the intro. Hey, be, yeah. you know I what? Mean, he didn't want to be on this podcast, so we're gonna cause drama for him. A, um, <laughs> he didn't say he didn't want to be on it. No, he did actually. He responded to the tweets. What tweets? Wait, uh, he just straight up said no thanks. Well, he was kind of like what he said is he doesn't want to be on podcast because uh, people. We asked him to be on the podcast. See now, now you're revealing who runs the Twitter. I know I'm not revealing. It's not me. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's why. But you're narrowing it down. It's pretty obvious that it's not me running the Twitter. I get the. I see it after the fact when it gets narrowed down to. Oh, these are good questions for so and so. Yeah, but uh, basically, the the whoever's handling the Twitter uh, was like, "Oh yeah, would you like to be on the podcast?" And he, on one of his videos, he saw it and ba- basically like roasted. It was like, "Wow, you're." Pretty much saying that your fans want me to be on the podcast, but not you. And it was just like, damn, that's very true. And also, he was like, he doesn't want to do podcasts because, um, like, media will take things and, like, twist it in a way. And, he, you know, he just doesn't uh, want to be, yeah. like, responsible. He does get, he does get, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's why he was like, oh, I don't want to do it. He has to be very careful with what he says. People Which is very also, understandable. People always, uh, yeah. That's I mean, how they I, target him. That's how we were an internet icon. Mm-hmm. We... And like Josh and I had this conversation before you guys started filming. We're like, they can take anything we say and twist it. Yep. We should just make sure we're always super nice. But then we got cut out of everything because we were boring. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's how reality shows work. A lot yeah. of people don't realize, like, even the most realistic ones, it's, there's no real reality show. Oh, yeah. Other than being like, I mean, like YouTube, like vlogging. And then even then, you don't know for sure that it's being like 100% real. You don't know what they're cutting. You don't know. They're acting, but most reality shows, it's like, unless you're crazy or, Mm -hmm. you know, that's usually how they get you. That's how you get screen time. Yep. But I don't know. Gotta cause drama. Yeah. I've witnessed that when we were filming that show, I witnessed it firsthand. I was like, oh, this is so interesting because we had producers and stuff and directors that have done this before. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, so interested in like their, their discussions is like, "How, how can we throw a wrench into like <laughs> things are going too well for people. How can we throw a wrench into it? I was like, wow. Th- so this is how it works. This is interesting. Did they specifically well, talk crap about anybody? Um, I don't remember. It was probably the earlier episodes because towards the ending, it was like the people that were great for the show and that were good. You mm-hmm. know, um, it wasn't like fan voting because that would have been too costly to have to have live fan yeah. votes and yeah, figuring sure. that stuff out. So it was based on like the judges, I and mean, none of that was fake. Like we actually came to a consensus. Um, but then they would have a say too. They they would give their recommendations of yeah. like this guy is like so not good on camera, or this person is uh you know really good. You yeah. Know? Uh, and Wait, basically, so, I mean, so you, what you was your that. impression on of of Paco? I was the one. I was the one who liked him initially. You know, because I didn't really know him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm editing this, so I can just cut it. You could. Write that part. You could, but I could just watch and just go, hey, put it back. <laughs> All right, well, well no, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I like them. T- they were, you guys were on the show, so obviously I liked you guys. Actually, no, you guys did really well. Uh, appreciate yeah. it. Wow, that's the nicest so thing you. you've ever said to a guest. I mean, what? No, it's not. It w- they did do really well. Yeah, so, I mean, you're currently still doing this blog that's very successful. I saw, yeah. and I found this so interesting because I went to go check it out because obviously I wanted to do some research. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't really read blogs, but um, I find it really interesting that you posted, you guys post your earnings. We do. This past month, you made $21,000, well, a little more than that, off just doing that blog. You have sponsorships, and I, they show their whole breakdown. They show your costs, I think, um... Mm-hmm. I thought that was like that's fascinating. For one, like, why did you decide to to show that? 
because it's a very private thing. And then also, um, how? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. How? No, because blogs are not the easiest thing to get around. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, it's very specific. Also, audience. are you yeah. hiring? Uh, yeah, but usually people like with talented, work ethic. Like, yeah. We're looking for like. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's like we make these same jokes, and, <laughs> yeah. but then like when guests make it, it's like, whoa, it's all adding up for like the yeah. viewers. They're starting to get it. <laughs> It's all inside For jokes. Papa's, I'm very hard work. Future employer <laughs> should watch this. Uh, go ahead. We're good. we're looking for like you know like Greg quality as yeah. opposed to like Paco that has quality. Really people. good work ethic. Uh, yeah. So we we were really it, it took us it was a lot of debate over uh, sharing our income reports every month, uh, but I think the idea was we wanted to show other aspiring bloggers how we do what we do. Right. Uh, and so it was supposed to be a resource. It, yeah, it's a really private thing, and we don't want to post it to be like bragging about anything. Or, no, it didn't or come to across do that way. Anything of that sort. It was really to show, because I think there's a, we get the question a lot, like, "Oh, how are you guys doing this full time?" Or what do you? And I'm sure you get that question as like a YouTuber, like not I, anymore. Yeah, I guess it's more common. Back now. in the day, when back people in the couldn't day, make money yeah. all the time but for blogs, yeah. it's still pretty a mystery, you know. Yeah, so it's um we we posted it up just really for that reason to show people it can be done. Because uh, I really believe that people can do what they want and chase their dreams uh, in like a responsible way. That's um, a very nice thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? I mean, I, I found because I read I read that one and it was interesting because you uh, or I don't know if Esther wrote it, but um, you were talking about like initially. So when did you guys uh, I guess what I'm asking is when did you start and then how did it how build? Did it because yeah. initially you, she said you, what, you made like 50 bucks off in a month or something? Or I don't know yeah, what it was. Yeah, we made almost nothing at the beginning and primarily because we didn't know how to make money. Right. right. Uh, so Esther started the blog actually when we moved to LA to do YouTube. Uh, so Esther was doing... When was that? Um, 2013. Okay. Oh, that's um, pretty relatively recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. she started it then because uh, she had a wedding photography business before that. And when we left Atlanta, she was looking for something new to do and just started to post about our travels because we just like to travel. And then she realized that people were doing this full time. And so started doing some research of like, okay, how do I do this more strategically and be smart about it? And so started to build that up. And then when we moved to Vegas the first time, uh, that's when like there's a good like it, just a little snowball effect right like right. there was there were more people finding the blog it was getting a bigger audience and she's amazing on the back end creative side but needed help on the business side so that's when i uh, that's left you. youtube and then decided to help uh, oh help i remember blog. when that ha- so when that was going that was like what what year was 2014 that? I remember yeah 2014 2015 yeah because you guys ju- were just leaving vegas yeah yeah we were um, just leaving vegas so that's when, when josh stayed right so what at what at, I mean, if it's not too personal, I guess it's not oh. personal because you're posting about it. Yeah. Um, in that first, when you, that first month when you decided to stop doing YouTube, what was your income at that point? Honestly, From the blog? I don't remember then. It was definitely not enough to be sustainable. Right. But that's why it's interesting because to take that leap, yeah. you know, to go in a completely different direction in something that's not making anything really. We saw, I think it's just that I saw the potential mm-hmm. and we, so this is the same with YouTube. We we didn't make a crazy amount of money, but we made enough to make a living off of it. Right for two years, especially if you live in Vegas. Yes, because Vegas co- is, is so much cheaper. Atlanta the same? It's about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's comparable so now. Much. California is way too expensive. Yeah, um, but we gave ourselves a year initially when we moved to LA to say like, if we can make enough money to make a living, then we'll try again for another year. And then we came out to Vegas to do the same thing. And we weren't really seeing the growth that we wanted to. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's good to chase your dreams, but be realistic about it. Because we basically gave ourselves the time frame of like, okay, we have enough savings to pursue it for a year. Beyond that, you know, it's not really responsible for us to do it anymore. We talked about a very similar thing too before in the past about like, uh, I think what the question was like aspiring to be a YouTuber. Yeah. Oh, with we your talking? Mom. Yeah, with yeah. Your mom. And how it's like re- the same thing. We were saying like, we don't want to be the people. It ended up sounding like don't follow your dreams, but it was like the point of like be smart about it, um, and know like you have to weigh out the risk. Like if if I had quit YouTube, yeah, right, in when I was in college, and at the time we weren't getting paid, um, really, then you have to realize. My mom made me realize like, hey, all your friends will be graduated, mm-hmm. and then you have to come back and be with a bunch of kids. Yeah, you know? so it's like you weigh out the the positives and negatives. So for you guys, it, like, did you have a fallback plan? 
Um, so I think we've just always had the mentality that worst case scenario, we can go back and get regular jobs. Right. Like, right, you know, right. when it comes down to it, I don't have an issue getting back to, I used to work a corporate job. I can go back to a corporate job if I need to. Um, so when the blog, when I, when I ended up quitting and helping Esther with the blog, we still had, you know, we calculated we had enough savings to do like a year and a half, two years uh, of like living conservatively to see if we could make it happen. And then that was about when it broke for us, like the tipping point of it doing well. So the last two years, uh, like two years ago, we did decent, I don't know, maybe like 150K for the year. And then um, last year we did like 250K. Um, so we were able to grow and scale the business. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of how, it's just, I think it's like YouTube in terms of it, it's a numbers game. So for us, we have a decent amount of people visiting the site every month. So we're able to make money off ad revenue, but then we also do sponsorships and then like a small percentage off affiliate sales. So that's like, if you were, if we tell you, Hey, we bought Ninja Milk on Amazon and give you our link and Paco goes to buy it. It's still the same price for Paco, but we make a small percentage of that. Right. Because you're still bringing people to, to this thing and, and you're putting your stamp on it, yep. essentially. And your stamp is valuable now. So I always wondered about that because what if, have you ever, have you ever endorsed anything or about a place that you did not 100%, like let's say you didn't oh, completely yeah. love it? Uh, especially at the beginning. Oh, really? Yeah, because at the beginning when, when you, it's like, I bet you can remember like brand deals early on definitely yeah. where you're just excited for the yeah. first brand deal. Uh, I think the biggest regret we had was uh, Bud Light Lime. Really? We got, yeah, we got that. And we were like, we, we hadn't even tried it. We tried it. And we're like, this is disgusting. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I don't mind Bud Light Lime. Really? I, I just don't, I wouldn't drink a lot of it. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I don't mind it. I hated it. And like <laughs> we, but like for me, it's like, I also signed a contract. So I was going to be professional about yeah, it and like yeah. do it. I don't think we wrote raving reviews about it, but we also didn't say we hated it. Right. You know, it was just like, a, here's a new thing. Yeah. Be yeah. excited Here because it it's is. new. <laughs> exactly. But wouldn't you like, I feel like I would know if I was reading it. I was like, they didn't oh, say you, they loved I'm it. Oh, I'm sure like, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure if you go back and I'm, I think it's still on our site. Uh, you could probably tell that we didn't like it. Um, really? But yeah, I think the, it's like lessons learned. You know, we right. learned, okay, we shouldn't endorse products that we don't uh -huh. like because it just ruins the integrity I, exactly, of what we talk yeah. about. I, I had to learn that too. Yeah. Like the hard way. Um, but I mean, it, it was even more so like back in the day on YouTube where like, mm. if you, even if it was a product you liked, mm -hmm. people just d hated you. That's because like they didn't any accept, yeah, any brand deals. Yeah, it's like, oh, this Ryan used to be so genuine and so like, uh, he wasn't a sell. And then the moment you do something, uh, that you even, even if it's a product you like, it's like you're a sellout. Sell out. Um, it's different now though. People are more open to it. Yeah. yeah. We didn't have any ad reads today, but thanks to Ninja Milk for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and even though uh, audiences are a lot more open today, you still kind of refrain from doing a lot of brand deals. And you do have opportunities. Well, for the podcast, we do, so we do it. Well, yeah, but, but that, yeah. even way for that, we're very selective yeah. with. Yeah. And so I think this is very interesting because you come from a place where, like you said, your ad revenue is really does really well. But brand deals, I'm sure that's like a huge end that it helps is. a lot. With it's their Ryan, majority. Ryan is more like AdSense or what, whatever you get. Still. I mean, I should be doing more brand deals. You but should. I'm just, it's different when, like for like the podcast like this is, it's a lot easier because it's just, you know, you do a read and if it's something that like, oh yeah, I could use that or I used it, it's super easy. Yeah. And because we're just talking about it. But if it's like, oh, make a, like a trailer, like one of those like fake trailers around this yeah. product or something. And it doesn't, if it's not funny or like cool or interesting, and that's not an easy thing to do without a product. If you throw a product in there, it just kind of ruins it. Yeah. You know, I think that's the difference though. The type of content you're building is very different. It's not yeah. like vloggy or just challenge videos that you could just throw the product into. Right. You're doing like fully scripted yeah. stuff. And yeah. So on second channel, it'd be pretty easy. obvious. To yeah. Do like play a game or like do whatever. Um, but yeah, making a whole skit around a product is not that easy. So you get a lot of crap for that too. Yeah. Unless it's a dope ass video. <laughs> so. Like Fortnite. Yeah. Well, that one wasn't like Fortnite came to me. I had the idea and I went to Fortnite. And let's talk about that, I guess, because um, there are a lot of brands that go to you, mm -hmm. but you know, you, you kind of don't, you rarely ever like yep. put second thought into it. Uh, at first you had to reach out for brands, but now brands are coming out to you. I'm assuming. It's still a mix, but yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. And how did um, you start that off? Because, you know, like being like, oh, check out our, our blog is very like legitimate and everything. Did yeah. You reach out to the company. Yeah. Like, so I, I mean, my background is in sales and account managing. So I kind of knew how to do that already. Um, but it was essentially yeah, putting together like a media kit or putting together like a, a basic deck of your numbers and then just reaching out and saying, this is what we want to do. Um, and this is why you should work with us. So you're saying you make a deck for every single sponsor? No. That you, or is it we like make a like a deck generalized deck. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you pitch with your deck. You send it to the company or the place you want to go to, see if you can yep. get some kind of sponsor, right? Mm -hmm. And ask them a rate. Yep. Interesting. So for bloggers out there who want to make their own blogs, I mean, you they should really just check out your blog because that's what you guys talk about, right? In your yeah. whole, I um, actually built a whole e-course on teaching how to do the brand stuff. Oh, I'm going to... Wow. Look that up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh <laughs> you would have to, to do a blog. You gotta write a lot. No, dude. I'm not gonna do a no. blog. But there's oh. a way that you can <laughs> apply it towards oh, YouTube. I'm sure. Yeah, what yeah, I, yeah. what I put the course together for is geared towards bloggers, but all the skills are usable for anything that you do mm -hmm. that you're trying to sell yourself. Or like for branding, essentially. For brand, it's yeah. not. Yeah, it's for like it's on how to how to how to pitch and negotiate. Yeah, so so like business. this is applicable to like any form of social media, almost. Yeah. Like Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, yeah. Twitch, whatever you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think there's like some things you have to tweak, but for the most part, it's all skills that you can use anywhere. And yeah. I think that's interesting because that if people can learn to do that or like mm -hmm. do it on their own, you don't have to go to these other like comp like these people, these networks that are trying to. Sorry, <laughs> I know you just. I don't know. If, I don't know. We can cut this <laughs> out. But I know you I have your own MCN. Go say it. You can say it. Um, Wait, but you just no, no, no. I just joined an MZN, yeah. Yeah. For Twitch. But, but a lot of no, 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 YouTube, but a lot YouTube. of that is stuff that people can be doing on their own. Yeah. Not necessarily if they don't have the time, but I'm saying uh that's all they do, basically. Yeah. A lot of what you're what you guys are doing on your own. Like, exactly. You could have easily just, you know, joined somebody to help do that for you. Or I mean, eventually if you're making enough money, you can hire someone to do it for you if yeah. you don't want to do it anymore. I mean, we we it was the same thing for us in YouTube. We were part of an MCN, but we pitched ourselves a lot mm -hmm. too. And I think that's part Do of Do they the, allow that though? Don't they take a percentage regardless? Uh, it depends on your contract. Right. I think it's changed now. Like the contract that I did, I made sure that if I found my own brand. See, people like didn't know that before though. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people got screwed. And I mean, it goes with the whole, like the whole phase thing that's happening right now, mm -hmm. right? Like, isn't that their whole situation about like the contract that he signed wasn't a good contract? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's his name? Tifu. Tifu. Yeah, his his contract, I mean, they just released it today, what it was, and it's not a good contract, and they even admitted it, but, like, everyone back in the day was just signing. They're yeah. like, oh, this is how you get successful. We'll help you out, but you give away so much, and people just, it's not their fault. They're not lawyers, you know? A lot of people just get excited and see opportunity, and they see their people they're fans of, They how big they got, and yeah. they just jump into it. And I would say, as a warning, just... I always tell people because they ask like, "Oh, what's your way? Sign with this. This is what they're offering me. Just read the contract." Yeah, and I mean, I bet mean, on yourself too. I think that's the thing. Like most people think contracts are very uh, overwhelming. They are. They can be. They can be, but I think it, it's a lot more common sense than you think too. Like you can just read some of the basic stuff that, like, I don't understand all the legal mumbo jumbo, but there's some things that are like ownership of content. You know, like some yeah. really basic stuff that should be red flags if you see it. Or just ask, like, what does yeah. that mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Do There's that. a lot of times I ask about stuff. See, but what they do is, and then think, you got to think about this too. You're not an 18 year old kid, mm. mm -hmm. adult, I guess, 18 year old adult. You're not like in your teens or you're not even in your 20s, you know? And, and imagine if you're that young, someone's coming at you with this, you know, deal. You can be a part of so and so made a million, million dollars this year. He yeah. works under our label or under our MCN. This could be you, you know, yeah. we can help you get those sponsorships. We can, they put all these flashy things out there and then they just start signing people. That's true. So it makes sense. And sometimes they do help, but a lot of times I know a lot of people who do, like they, More often they get screwed. Not. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a numbers game. Yep. I don't know how we got on this topic again. I don't know. Well, I mean, we're, cause we were talking about uh, brands and how he kind of initially started. Right. And yeah. He was finding it for himself. And then you talked about how MCNs, you know, Kind of, kind of took advantage of it in the early stages of YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how that is now. But I don't um, know. Yeah, I think people are smarter. But this is such. It was just an interesting yeah. thing because that that whole phase thing was happening. Yeah, I don't know if you know more about it. You're the you're the up to date guy. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, there's not much more to discuss. I mean, they are releasing the contracts. There's already been a lot of videos about are it. They still, is he still suing them? Uh, he, I, I, as of this moment, he still is. Mm -hmm. um, but he asked his lawyer to kind of like retract a lot of the statements from I before. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and then even Banks is like, yo, like you live down the street from me. Why don't we just talk? Like we could have just talked in person. And I, I feel like in social media now, a lot of people feel like if they're the first to out someone. Yeah. The, uh, the whole internet just jumps on their side right. yeah. because of the whole like cancel culture and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you could easily avoid these things by talking about it in person. But if you want the numbers, if you want money, you come out, you just say any, any random thing. And then everyone's like, what, what, what? And you just get hella views. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know what would be even crazier, like super crazy is if this whole phase thing was planned and it's just a phase. <laughs> what if they just planned this together? Like, Hey, we don't have drama. We haven't had good drama lately. Yeah, like, it's just all PR. You're gonna pretend to sue us. We're gonna make a ton of money. I mean, I, I'm not, a, I'm not <laughs> accusing them of doing this, but they could easily do that. Yeah, like look at whenever there's just something big about a celebrity, it's like, oh, guess whose album's coming out next week, or like in like, or they just announced. You know, like that stuff happens all the time. So I wouldn't PR be surprised. People that are makes smart. sense. That does yeah. make sense. Damn, we went. Is that why you do so much mode. random stuff? Why? Just to be like relevant all the time? No, maybe I should stop doing random stuff. Yeah, you got to pick maybe. and choose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That way, like, then when like, you actually do the random things, yeah, then, the, then you stand out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Paco's back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that, that is. I don't. I don't like the way you said it. You know, it sounded very negative. Still, you're just like, oh, keep him quiet, and then when he does something, <laughs> still be disappointed. Let's I not do that. I love when we have guests that actually know us. They <laughs> always end up roasting you, so people can see like what the real <laughs> relation. Like it's starting to build up. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, <laughs> but the thing is, no, no, no. So, let, 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 let's say this for the, the audience that doesn't understand and know our relationship with a lot <laughs> of people. Like some people think like I'm, I'm a douchebag. Ryan's a douchebag or like or whoever really our guest is. fighting. Yeah. It's time. never a real argument. Like, uh, no, no. That we have real arguments. Well, yeah, but it's not like we hate each other. Mm. No. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is why they believe that. Uh, <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the, uh, the other day somebody tweeted at Ryan, uh, this clip of me and Ryan wrestling. And yeah, I saw like, that. I saw that. Yeah, and they're like, "When is this fight gonna happen again?" <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and Ryan responded, and he's like, "Whenever Paco wants it." And I was just like, N "Yeah, I said when. Yeah, whenever Paco wants to. What did I say? To fight again, basically. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but I would not fight him. Well, then you, you said you, you don't want these the hands. Yeah, you don't. And I said, "Yeah, until you watch them." No, I'm gonna come in as dirty as possible. Yeah, then I don't want this mm. hands. Yeah. yeah, or any of it. That's I a get, strategy. Exactly. Every advantage. Yo, actually, for wrestling, did you ever like not brush your teeth the day of a meet or like? No, but I've I've wrestled people who smelt like shit, like literal, <laughs> like literal, like poop. Uh -huh. Like, and, and you I, think they literally? Well, the thing is, too, it's you never know because wrestling is such a like a intense sport to like in that day. It's not like even like MMA where like they weigh in yeah. the day before, right? And then they're just like they rehydrate, they re eat. Like in in the weigh in room that morning. You're, you're, you're like 20 pounds less than you should be. No waters in your system. You know when you have no water and you're dehydrated, you know what your breath smells like? Oh, uh, yeah. It uh, That, like, morning breath times 100. Yeah. So everyone has that in the room. Mm. Plus, you don't care how you smell because you're starving and you're thirsty. So, I mean, it's, uh, there's no excuse for not shower. You can still shower when you're, um, you can still shower. I don't know. But or some wipe. people really smell. Sounds like people don't wipe either. I, yeah, there's there's been some people I feel like I don't know maybe they're trying to. I mean, take I can see that as a strategy, kind of. Because I mean, it's already hard to function and breathe. Yeah. Now imagine a smell there. Yeah, you know, you're trying to choke they, them. There were some people though that like because they smelt, I would get upset and it would make <laughs> me wrestle even harder. <laughs> so it's like because normally I'm very calm. Like even when I wrestled, it was like I was very calm. Yeah, like they compared were, to a lot. Like people, some people would use anger and emotion. I never really got like use my emotion like on the only times i ever got mad i have it on video too actually and sean can, can attest to this too because he was there is with somebody like i had like a wrapped finger because i was injured and some guy tried to grab it and it was like in like a, the fine like a regionals or something like that and you could see and he was grabbing it i was like shaking his hand off and i just got pissed and then i just i destroyed him <laughs> because i was like i don't like you like who does that like yeah. you have an like injury he was purposely going yeah, for like the you're injury. trying to hurt me <laughs> like you're already at an advantage so I don't know. I think um, the smelly thing too 
some I know that's not their fault, but sometimes when you smell something that's that bad, it's like, come on, dude. Yeah, but you could tell the difference between body odor and poop. Yeah, but I this is what I was gonna say. I think you don't realize when you're that desperate to lose weight, some people you take diuretics, you, 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 uh, you yeah. laxatives. Like maybe he actually did shit himself. <laughs> like I don't Could know. Be. Yeah, and it was just like, man, I just got to get out of here. I got to win or lose really <laughs> fast. I do feel like this setup is like two against one though. For what? It's literally us. Like, we're just like, like this. It's always you. like that. Yeah. But yeah. even on film days, it's like everyone against me. Yeah, that's so true. I'm well, used to I it. mean, so you kind of set yourself up for. We don't have to get into roasting. This is yeah. like we've done this too many episodes. Okay. It's getting no old. more. We need a break, and then we'll roast you again. Yeah. And talking about breaks, it's time for. Has it really already been? Mm-hmm. Wow. Really? Oh, yeah. It's fast. All right. I guess then Shishi break. I guess. <laughs> and we're back. Welcome back to the uh, second half of Off the Bill podcast. Um, yeah, you guys should do the whole episode just like that. That's how um MP. That's how um NPR NPR talks, and yeah. it's something about it that's really nice. It's I think it's is this called is this ASMR? It's basically Would that be considered ASMR, ASMR though for uh, like NPR. Yes, NPR. But it as a n is ASMR. Is only talking considered an ASMR too? Yeah, I think they, it's they talk like that, and they start triggers. making weird sounds. Anything that triggers anything that, that triggers the. Do you get that thing? Because I try. It. Oh, I, mean, I don't get I don't it get at all. Me neither. Mm. What about? Um, uh, no, I don't get it. Mm. At lunch today, though, I wanted to. I had an idea to start an ASMR where I just drink drinks. I don't know if that exists. Just Could like, be. You literally. We just so happened to be talking about, it and you literally had that. Idea? I had that thought. Yeah, at lunch wow. today. Things add up. Something yeah. there's something about. So you know, I was thinking about too. I was recently see. I recently saw Joe Rogan, uh, 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 his podcast, and they were talking about you know, psychics and like he. I mean, obviously, real. There's it, there's a debate whether they're real or not, right? Mm -hmm. Some people really believe in it. Some really don't. Joe Rogan's stance is like they're all BS, <laughs> pretty much. But then they were talking about, and it made me wonder too. You know how when you like think about somebody calling you or like not not somebody calling you. somebody you think about somebody and then they call you or like oh, yeah you, that that happens to you guys right never happened to me you never like thought about something and then they text you all of a sudden no so oh here's my okay, thing never mind <laughs> <laughs> no no, no I, that's happened to me but i think what it is though is that uh you just only notice those yeah like you're I, I always so too, thinking about like something or someone and it just happened that that aligned. Yeah, yeah, and moment. it's very coincidental. Yeah, and it's but very there's a lot of really like, like it happens to me a lot, like very very frequently. And maybe it's just because, and it's like random people, like people. The only time, maybe the only time I notice it is when I'm thinking of someone that I shouldn't like that you haven't it, talked to. You yeah, don't talk to and regularly. then I, and then I don't. My my mind isn't. Oh, I'm psychic. My mind goes to like, to how how do they? They're listening to me, or like they're like, like I get sus I get like suspicious. I'm a very I guess I guess I'm paranoid. Everyone just has yeah. has bugs in your house. Yeah, I don't know. I, that's my first thought, though. I start thinking conspiracy. I bet you if I if we were to take DNA tests, we probably have Chinese in us. I mean, I think I most, for sure would. Yeah, because I'm okay. Asian Nowen. people do right. Yeah, I think all yeah. of Asia is just like kind of a mix. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start claiming it when they take over the world, and then I'm just gonna. I'm be, I'm also a part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're just sitting on the fence for now. <laughs> yeah, for now. I mean, uh, I mean, I just never took the test, but I'm sure if if, if I did, have you taken the test yet? I've taken the My Heritage one, mm -hmm. not the not the uh, what's the more popular one? Is twenty three and twenty three and me. And me. Mm -hmm. the My Heritage one, uh, honestly, was pretty garbage. Like it was what like mean? it gave me my results, and it was like you're Asian. <laughs> that is <laughs> you're. That's how they break it down. Ninety eight percent Chinese. Or Vietnamese. Like, it wasn't... Oh, I, I would see. think you'd get more of a breakdown than yeah. that. But it was, like, this really broad generalization. So uh, <laughs> the guy, like, they contacted us and sent it to see if we wanted to check it out. And I said, I'd check it out first before I write about it. And that was one of those yeah. things I was like, I'm not writing about this. Because he was like, how how was your how were your results? I was like, well, I found out I was Asian. <laughs> <laughs> like, wasn't yeah, super whack. surprising. Yeah. Yeah, because I thought it'd be cool if I got, like, a deeper breakdown yeah. of stuff. I didn't know 23andMe does like crazy stuff like how 
short your legs are or like they they do weird genetic things too and who you're related other people who you're related to yeah i think that's interesting wow um we had yeah because somebody we met was like yeah i got a profile that said like you're unlikely to be a sprinter because of your like genetic makeup and what you you could have shorter <laughs> Damn, what legs. What a diss! Yeah, but it's I like know. I already knew that twenty three. I didn't need yeah. a. I didn't what need a male even, diss. It gets even more like you know as you keep developing. It's like hey, you're probably not successful. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're probably living. <laughs> hey, you're living with your mom in her basement, <laughs> and it's just like you're not really gonna do anything in life. Yeah. That'd be yeah. interesting to know. Would you want to know? That's the question. Oh, see that that is a good question though. Because then, it, are you the type of person to be like, I'm going to prove this wrong? Right. You know? Yeah. It's personality based at that yeah. point. So, uh, ooh, what? Let's, let's, let's take it even further. What if these types of tests could be like, this is the exact day you're going to die? I would, would, you guys, mm. you I would, would want to know. You would want to know. I would yeah. want to know too. I don't, really? Yeah. You what? wouldn't want to know? I don't know, man. I think as a planner, like, <laughs> I'd prefer to plan. Like, that'd yeah. be, it'd just be good to know. Yeah. Like, especially if it's a guarantee. Yep. Like I'm not going to die before then, obviously, unless I do something super stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but what if it's like, but what if it's like the matrix too, where it's like, they're telling you this to actually to, make you live longer or, uh, or they're yeah. telling you this and because they, because you read it, that's why it's coming true. Yeah. Self-fulfilling. Self-fulfilling. Interesting. Conspiracy. I would know. I would want to know. You would want to know. Yeah. You would want to know too. I don't, I, see, I don't know. I'm on the fence about that one. But why? Cause like you'd be scared to know when you die well or if like i know when i'm gonna die and uh, so i start like oh i know i'm gonna die i should start doing a lot of things before that which sounds good but is that really me doing those things because that's what i want to do or am i doing it because i know i have an expiration date i, I think that's just I, you I thinking what, too much about it yeah, no but i know i know what you're saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying right because yeah, is that authentically genuinely you're just me. gonna be Thinking about this loop, and you're gonna be in in your own head until you die. <laughs> until I die, yeah. yeah. You'd be crazy. I overthought old. myself to death. It'd be crazy if we so did maybe. all have this expiration date, and we looked it up, and all of ours are on the same day. And oh. we're like, what happens on that day? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so. It was cool. an RHPC field trip. Yeah. Well, we just be like, hey, we can't be around each other. Yeah. That day. I mean, yeah, but yeah, it would you... still happen, though. That's the thing. Somehow. See, I don't think I would try to avoid it. Okay, it's, okay. so you guys said, yes, you would know when I you want to die. I would want to know. You would want to know, yeah. Would you want to know also how you die? Yes. I, yeah, absolutely. For sure. I don't know why I thought that would be any different. <laughs> yeah. No, this is like a, there, there's movies about this, right? Isn't there? Yeah, there I is. I feel there's like a ton there of movies. are. Yeah. yeah. I would absolutely, if I could have the choice to know when and how, yeah. Why not? I think so, too. Okay. Haven't you ever thought about the, that idea? I mean, you, you're more religious, right? You're like yeah. from a Christian background and, you know. Yeah. Um, but I always had the thought because I didn't really know. I didn't really know. Um, I never had to go to church when I was a kid. Like, I always used to think about these kind of things, like how it feels to die. And like, even being like, what if however you die, you just, you know, your brains to, I don't, I don't know. I know the science behind it doesn't make sense. But what if that last feeling of whatever you feel is just, it just keep, you keep feeling that's it for all the you rest feel of the rest of your life. Yeah. Or rest of eternity. And it's just like, I don't know. It's a possibility. Maybe that's considered like hell or like this. Or, and then if it's a good experience and that's your version of heaven. What? I don't know. I just have random Wait, but what's like, like a, what's a good experience in your death? Uh, a good experience. Don't, well, some people say they feel euphoric, right? People who claim who have died and come, you know, right before you die, you feel like there's something really, some chemical, right? Yeah. Um, okay. what is it? What, 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 I don't know that. I don't know what it is. There's some chemical that's released right before you Endorphins? die. Isn't there no. something to do with DMT? I listen to too much Sarah Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, know. there's something to do with like uh, I I don't want to talk about it because I don't know enough. Yeah, but it's something okay. to do like something euphoric yeah, yeah. you feel. I've heard that right as you're dying or something like that. And people have said it because they've died and and were revived or whatever it was. Hey, you know what? Let's do it, man. Social experiment, guys. What you're gonna just die? Yeah. Mm. You know, and we'll put social experiment gone wrong. Well, I YouTube, mean, YouTube. That's a YouTube clickable to, thing, dude. Yeah. There's another episode that's gonna get unmonetized. <laughs> There goes the shisha brain. Wait, bad. but how would you want to die? Yeah. You didn't answer. Yeah. Well, neither did he. Yeah, but true. if I had to die in a painful way, yeah. I would want my body to be like stretched, like one of those old <laughs> fashioned torture, chamber, torture chambers, you know, Why, like though? in the medieval days. 
That sounds. But why, but why that yeah, way? Like why? I, I think know, you're just man. saying that. I don't believe you. Like I don't think. You I think would it would like just that. be the most interesting thing. Like who dies like that anymore? You know. This is this. Yeah. I don't believe you for one, and this is very dark. <laughs> Ah, I don't mind it. You know, me, <laughs> I, know, I, know other I know other people do mind it. So. All right, um, fair. All right, getting away we'll from torturing on. ourselves to death. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else do, should we talk about? <laughs> That's a very interesting. Um, yeah, segue yourself out of that one. <laughs> All right. So speaking of death, Game of Thrones. Anybody see that? Oh, that's a good that's segue. A solid segue. I, actually, I actually haven't. You get a I actually, don't, I actually really don't want to talk about this because I haven't seen it yet. I'm well, caught up except for the last season. I. I I'm Amazingly, the only one in here who's seen it, right? Yeah, but, but I know but everything has, but, that happened. Yeah, but Paco okay. doesn't watch shows, yeah. really. Ever? And, Any? Uh, not, not really. Not the, if it's popular, he's kind of like hipster. Like well, if no, it's popular, see, he I'm doesn't. I'm trying to watch stuff now because I'm like, oh, oh if I want to make, you know, if I want to be a comedian and make content and stuff. Like, Why can't you, you just admit to. that it's yeah. good? Like, shows are good. Like, no, they are. I'm so, not saying they're not. Yeah. You say, oh, oh that's not my would. thing. Is there a show that you started thing. watching before it got popular and then no. it got popular and you're like, oh, I'm not going to watch this no. anymore? Game of Thrones. He started watching it. No, I started watching it late. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was on Game Fair. of Thrones late. But last night I did watch Scarface. That's and it good. Was I get it. Not as good as I thought it was going to well, be. Well, it's kind of old. It's, yeah. It's just like dated. That was the first time you've seen it? Yeah. And I was just like, this is. I don't even remember there's Scarface. No real like story to it. You know, it's just a lot of like cussing and <laughs> yeah. what made you want to watch that? Because because I was like, oh, I should watch classics, too. So I have like references to th and things to look up. So I'm like studying and doing I effort. Guess. And I was like, I was like, so I Googled. I was like, why is Scarface so popular? And then a lot of reviews were saying Scarface was actually a really poor movie. But the reason why it did so well is it's a cult classic amongst like uh, like there's a lot like that black and Latino mm -hmm. communities. Because it was the first of its kind. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. just so like different and vulgar that a lot of people were like, oh, I like it, you know, because it is different. And I was like, oh, okay, I can see that. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's like somebody, I just saw a post, somebody posted like, oh, I'm this year's old. Um, and it's a picture of me doing like the how to be ninja and how to be, you know, and you go and walk back and watch those. You tell somebody, hey, I grew up watching this. And like, if they go to those videos, I'm embarrassed. Like, yeah. I don't want people to today, like, to watch that because you compare it to the content that's out today, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But that's in the same way that movies back then, you might have grew up on it. So you might, like, oh, even if, even if they go back to watch those videos, they might think it's still like, oh, it was a classic for its yeah. time. You go back and it's the same thing. You go back and watch movies because I, I watch movies and I'm like, oh, this was bad, but I still enjoy watching it because it's like, um, I'm just like reminiscing. Like I guess. Harold and Kumar. Uh, it's not bad. That what one's actually mean? pretty funny. Though. No, funny. it is, but it's an older movie. No, I'm it talking is. like going back to like the movies of like Home Alone. Mm. Yeah, right. That I saw, and you watch it again. It's not bad. It's just like you compare it to like the comedies and stuff they have, like the effects, everything that they have now. It's just like this is this would never hold up today, but it's a great movie still, and I'll still watch it. Yeah, a lot of it's nostalgia, right? Yeah. Like it's just that that's what holds it together. Yep. But I mean, like I grew up watching like the X Men cartoons. Yep. Yep. It's a horrible series. <laughs> <laughs> I if don't you remember. go back and watch any of those episodes, <laughs> it's really, it's that, really bad? that bad. The only cartoon I think that was actually decent was the Batman one. Which that one? Probably, the Batman animated series. Oh, where they yeah, actually yeah, say yeah. kapow and all that stuff? No, 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 no. no the like 90s one. Oh, okay. That went for a long time. That went for a really long time. Do you remember the one where he, he had the red, he turned red and black. He was like all like young and. Oh, hip. yeah. What oh, the super skinny one? dude. Yeah, right? yeah. He's a skinny, skinny slick and kind of yeah, cool yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, I, that resurfaced because, you know, um, Edward from. Uh, Twilight is playing the new Batman. Robert Pattinson. Batman. You're like, yeah, if yeah, he was yeah. Batman, he's this version of Batman. <laughs> and I was like, oh, isn't that such an interesting choice that they picked Robert Pattinson? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like... You like it, huh? No, it's not that. Just from what I've heard yeah. and things, it's just like his acting just got, you know, way better. And there's clearly a reason why the Could casting be. directors are looking at him. Yeah. I, think, I think he's one of those guys who are... Probably decent actor, mm -hmm. just unfortunately was part of a really bad franchise. Well, or it might not have even been bad. It's just like because it was so popular with like a younger demographic. Yeah, it's lame. Yeah. It's considered lame. And, and because in our society now, it's it's like, hey, let's hate on this because it's fun. You know, that's the thing to do. So everybody just jumped on it because it's yeah, real easy true. to hate that thing. That's you know? true. It's about vampires. It's pretty and love. bad though. <laughs> it's, I've seen them. 
You know why? Like, it's wow, you're one of those. It's, it's, it's because it had so much lo- like fans. Anything with a lot yeah. of fans, like Justin yeah, yeah, Bieber, yeah. his he, any uh, anyone older than him is like he's uh, whack. Yeah, and like I was there, like. I liked his songs. Like a lot of his songs, I thought were like, "This is super catchy." He's hell talented. I would make joke, and I would make jokes about him because that was the culture at the time. Yeah. But like, it's just because he was popular. If he wasn't that popular, if like he had a, he was like indie, right? Going back to like when people, mm-hmm. not that saying that you just you do that, but if he was just independent, a few people knew about him. Be like, damn, this is good looking kid. He'd get signed. I mean, he'd be like popular in a different yeah. way. Mm-hmm. If yeah. he was like, think of, I mean, who's the current person right now? Who's like the most popular? Um, teen, teen tweeny, hate on. uh, heart. Throb. I mean, like Ariana Grande, kind of. Is she, like a lot of people like love her, but yeah, a but lot of people like to hate on her. Like too. Kids, oh, do they? Yeah, like Taylor yeah. Swift too. Well, she kind of, she has a lot of PR issues, but um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not a good example. But like you know, like you know, what I'm talking about the like yeah. the Justin yeah. Bieber's of the world, or like yeah. One Direction. It's mm-hmm. like they can actually be talented people, but because their audience is so crazy and in love with them and young, it's looked. Everyone else is like, that's so lame. Yeah. W- what's that new girl? Uh, B- Billy. Billie Eilish, yeah, Billie but Ray she's Cyrus. different though. But yeah, she's different because she's not main. She's not main. She is mainstream, but, but she she's is mainstream in a, now in a different she... in a different way. Yeah, that's true. If I was her wondering fans if start people becoming hate on like, her. if her fans start becoming like, I think right now she's in that. Fa- she's becoming that. Yeah, but if her fans start becoming like those hardcore, like, oh my god, defend her at all costs, kind of thing. You know, in the way that BTS fans, you know, yeah. like they're getting yeah. BTS is getting tons of hate from people who aren't BTS fans because of their fans. Yeah, and it's just like when you're at the top of that list. You know, and you're the hottest thing, and all these young people are rooting for you and defending you like more than they should be. It it naturally you're gonna have the opposite effect. When you have that much love, you need that much hate. I wonder if it uh, happened with like way back in the day before social. I'm like, sh- I'm sure. Like the Beatles. I'm sure there was Beatles I'm, haters. Yeah, I'm sure there was. Yeah. At its t- at the time, and yeah. I'm sure like you know now we're like you can't say something bad about the Beatles. Yeah. In fifty years, how old are the Beatles? Not fifty. Years. <laughs> in the fifty years, right? There's going to be people who are like, oh, my God, how dare you say that about Justin Bieber? He's a classic. He's an American yeah, classic. Yeah, he's a hero. <laughs> Isn't he changed he Canadian? the game. He's he a Canadian. Canadian. He's American a Canadian. classic. He's Canadian. He, he brought our countries together. <laughs> he's the yeah. reason why there's peace. Remember, and in the history books, they talked about when he peed in the bucket. <laughs> like, you guys remember the classic bucket gate? Yeah. You know? Or when he was, like, driving drunk. Yeah, and, and going speeding. really fast. Yeah. Po- Same with Jake Paul. Logan Paul, yeah. all going to be part of the history books because of how big they were. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to be, well, they might be remembered in a different way. But um, <laughs> the way he said it was so negative. <laughs> was that negative? <laughs> well, you never know. Their careers aren't over. You know, like they still have the hardcore. That's true. They, have they, their, they can still turn it around yeah. for what their legacy is going to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're I very young, like, too. I, mean, yeah. I feel like even just Logan already has, for how deep into a hole he was and to where he is now it's night and day like he was canceled according mm-hmm. to most people but he really wasn't you know yeah. yeah he's still relevant despite what people will say because they're comparing to his the top of his game and right? ksi said that he would be friends with logan before but not jake, jake. Before interesting jake. right mm. and jake didn't even do anything that crazy i was so. I, I we didn't even talk about this after that podcast uh you did you see that we i mean you know that we worked yeah we did a podcast with him um, he said that he would actually be because we asked, could you ever be friends with Logan? He'd be like, I think I could, but I could never be friends with Jake. Dang, that's such a strong statement. That is. Like so definitive. Yeah. And I and he said he's just a bad person. <laughs> and <then he's, laughs> wow. And I was just trying to figure out. I was like, what? Like, because that's how you would talk about Logan. So like, what? Yeah. What it just shows he, he can change. Like things yeah. can change. <laughs> or what were you saying just before that? Uh, or what were you? Somebody was just saying something. Oh, we're talking about Jake Paul and how like. Justin Bieber before that. Yeah. Right. And then right, right, right. Billie Eilish. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what I was saying about her, right? Because she's still kind of like, she's weird, right? Yeah. She's kind of like Lord when Lord just came out. Like yeah. kind of a weirdo, like, but like good music and just, just different, like mm-hmm. very unique. And it's like kind of cool. Yeah. Like it's kind of indie, but mainstream indie. If that makes sense. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to describe that kind of music. Well, it's like, it's, it's like anti-pop. Right. Yeah. So because it's anti-pop, a lot of people right. like. And I, and I just think that it's because she's still new. That's yeah. why she's not getting that kind of hate. All yeah. And you know what? All it takes is one scandal. One thing she says wrong, and then she's going to build a resume. And she's young, too. That's what I mean. Yeah. Young people always say something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've seen her interview where she's, like, watching herself from a year ago, 
And like, yeah. you could take that into different, like, oh, she's so relatable. She's so like, you know, n- a normal person, but like you could take that, even that interview in another way too. Um, yeah. So especially if you're on media all over the place. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. One Nobody's slip perfect. up. Yeah. yeah. One slip up. And then up. even if you are perfect, it's like, she, she's trying so hard to be perfect. Like, you know, there's always going to, the bigger you become, I still think it's always a balance. The more love you get, the more hate you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everything. And I think we can go into that and talk about it, especially with YouTube, because both of you guys, uh, when when you were doing social media, uh-huh. you had kind of like a clean cut, you know, family friendly type of uh, brand. Yep. Ryan, definitely family friendly. A lot of times when he swears on the podcast, people are like, oh, my gosh, he swore or something. And she. <laughs> but uh, so what what is the pressure like, you know? Where you have to keep it like this, but you know your personalities aren't necessarily. It wasn't always hard that uptight for me. Really, I mean, it wasn't I, hard for me either. Yeah, what, it's just because it doesn't people. make it. It doesn't make it funny. Like it wasn't the jokes I was writing weren't based on vo- being vulgar. Yeah. Like so, it's it's not hard. I mean, sure, sometimes you'd be like to say even any an unnecessary f word is a it's like a fart joke. It's super easy to make something funnier if you're being vulgar. It's like shocking. I mean, I still like fart jokes though. So. <laughs> Maybe I'll start swearing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you yeah, guys no, are even no. cleaner. I, mean, I agree. I, I think, well, we weren't doing like daily vlogging or anything like that either. We were very, uh, we picked what we curated. We curated all our content. So it was easy to, to put together what we look like from the outside appearance. Mm-hmm. But I mean, for us, it was just the thought of like, well, A, we came out, um, like people knew we were Christian. And I think there's... There's a stigma with it that's good and bad, and we didn't, I mean, we're pretty, I would say we're very laxed about, like, how our views are. It's not like we don't curse or any of that or drink. You know, like, we drink, we curse, whatever. But it's just the appearance of uh, we just want to be responsible with our platform Mm -hmm. Mm because people can take that one thing and just twist it, uh, like we were talking about earlier. So we just kind of chose to say, okay, well, we want to come out, make sure we have a clean appearance. Uh, also for brands, yeah. mm-hmm. for me, it was a lot of business. So for me, our first, like when I first started on YouTube, it was actually more like my content. I said the F word. I said a bunch of stuff. Like I said, fag. I said like a bunch of yeah, like things. I would, could. Yeah. And one, well, and then also I just did, didn't think much of it. Right. Cause, yeah. and then I started getting like emails and stuff from like parents and I was still a kid too. I mean, technically I wasn't 18 yet. Um, and that's when I realized like, Oh, sh- like, there's actually kids, uh, most of my fan base is like not just 13 to 17 because that's what YouTube would show, but they're younger. like like five-year-olds I would meet and like eight-year-olds I would meet. All right, why are like, you meeting them though? They would just, I would just see them. Oh, okay. And then they would be like, oh, I'm a fan. I'm like, damn, you heard me say fuck. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so I don't parents want... actually emailed you and said, could well, you we not had some, do that? We had some like, of that. And then um, I, I saw it for myself in person when people started coming up to me. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I need to chill out. On the, not for brands at the time because I wasn't making any money, but it was like, oh, I, I should probably not say every say all that stuff. But it wasn't like me. It wasn't that hard. Like it wasn't like that wasn't my thing anyway. That's not who I wanted to portray, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I still yeah, don't. I mean, even if I'm swearing on this, it's not like in a – I don't think it. it's not in a context where it's like I'm trying to. I'm trying to force it. I don't know. I don't, right. I don't have an issue with people that swear, to be honest. Yeah, and it's not like you're swearing every other word. It, yeah. It's when it's appropriate. And the thing is, too, like, people who do talk like that, if they, if that's just how they speak, maybe that's how they where they grew up. Like, I don't have an issue. Like, it's just words. I think we give words too much meaning mm-hmm. to me, personally. Um, but I also don't get offended easily, so. Yeah, that's true. But a lot of people in the world do, and that's why we kept our channels that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Good question, Paco. Yes. I always come with good questions. Mm-hmm. Thank Give you. Give me another good question. All right. Why is your hair like that? What's wrong with my hair right now? No, you just always have had like, or like the very stereotypical Asian haircut where it's like. Why are you shaved on the sides? This is the second, like ever since the Kev podcast, you're just trying to find ways to roast. No, I'm. Man, you picked on his hair too? He did. Yo, Kevin's hair was. <laughs> 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 like he just came out of Sunday school. I'm. So gonna send him this segment. <laughs> <laughs> I cut my own hair. Oh, that's why that makes sense. Then. It doesn't look bad. What are you talking about? It's like normal. 
I'm, I'm waiting till you fall asleep and shave your head, dude. <laughs> Wait, you cut your hair by yourself because <laughs> I honestly because we moved so much, it was hard to find a haircut person that I trusted. Mm. Cause like hair is a very particular thing. Yeah. And I also my hair grows so fast, I didn't want to pay for a haircut every like <laughs> week and a half. Because you're making fifty dollars a month at the time. <laughs> yeah. And now exactly. that you make twenty five. Even or, now, I'm yeah. like I've just gotten so used to it. It's easier for me to cut my hair than to like go out and get a haircut. Mm -hmm. True. I know it's not a perfect Honestly, haircut. Honestly, if I knew oh, how I to cut my own hair, I would probably do that. Yeah. It took me a long time. Like, it used to take me like an hour to cut my own hair. No, like, but your reasoning is different. You would only want to learn how to cut your own hair, so you still don't have to leave your house. Yes. But that's what, like, it's for convenience. Like, I just yeah, like, and I just too. like learning the new skill. Like, to be able to. I don't like that. <laughs> 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 no, but, you know, so I probably save so much money. And people on YouTube would know because I'll cut it really short and I'll yeah. wait until it's super long. That's true. You grow so your hair I, out. I am, I am trying to teach kids, you know, how <laughs> to be smart with your money. Yeah. Haircuts aren't cheap. They aren't cheap, especially good ones. Yeah. So if you, if you just don't mind looking fugly for like a good three weeks to a month, you could save a whole, you could cut your hair, haircut expenses in half. Just let it grow out. How often do you cut your hair? Like once a month. Okay, that's Some, not I too bad. I thought it was more than that, actually. No, that my See, but I go like once like every two and a half, right maybe. Now. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, have so the same been, hairdresser. You should, we should introduce wait, you. Wait, is it that lady? That, I think I might have gone to her once. Is it, have you been know. using the same person? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, in Vegas. I went to her once. You didn't like her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she, I liked her. I just... Oh, okay. You just didn't want to pay. <laughs> no, I, I think I tried it right before we left oh, Vegas last time. Oh, I see, I see, I see. And then at that point is when I started to learn how to cut my own hair. So... Yeah, so we I, got I cut it this way because it's the easiest way to cut it. I can't, I've tried to like fade it more too hard in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. So it's the easiest way to cut my hair. Well, for those that are just listening, he just has a very Asian stereotypical haircut. Asian haircut. You know, so even Andrea, our hairdresser, tried to give me that same hairstyle where it's like shaved on the sides and like long on the top and kind of goes to the side. And I don't know why every hairdresser just really liked that for a short amount of time. And then every Asian guy, for whatever reason, not just Asians, I get I think a, a lot, lot of white of people Asians. too. No, but there's a lot of a lot Asians. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Asians have yeah. had that a same haircut. Have that and I, I just, I don't know. I, I didn't want to just do the same thing, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yeah. She's a, she's a, she's a, she's German. Yeah. But she was married to a black guy and has like black kids really like in black culture. I asked her to do a, was it a fade? No, no, no. Uh, dreadlocks? Oh, dreadlocks, yeah. You wanted it to do hurt. That. It hurt so much. He gave oh, up. you actually did? I it? gave up. It was too painful. How, how far did you get into? One strand. <laughs> One? Yeah. He told me he was going to do it too, and I was <laughs> yeah. like expecting to see it, and then he just had a regular haircut. She was like, this, it's going to be three hours of this. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm good. You know, <laughs> do you respect Jeremy more now? He had dreadlocks, right? Is that what it's called? Or corn no, he had no. cornrows. Cornrows? Didn't he? I thought, he dreads. Dreads. I thought it was dreads. He had dreads? Yeah. Dreads are the ones that look like little, like, um, what do you call them? Like, like churros thick. almost. <laughs> little churros? Like, kind of <laughs> like churros. That's not how I was going to describe it. But yeah, the, the, the thicker yeah. strands, not the like yeah. one that's like designed. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Is that really what he had? Yeah. He had that for a little bit. And he got a lot of crap, remember? Like, uh, Kenny yeah. Martin called him yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, culture appropriation that kind of isn't it interesting how that was like the hot topic and then all of a sudden it's like kind of died like yeah, people still yeah. talk about it but it's not like in every like oh so and so appropriated this this isn't like that was like a all these it, pc pcness of the week we haven't done that in a while in a while pcness of the week just real quick um culture appropriation is not in right now no um you can still do it and get called out for it but mm, news articles and stuff they don't really care about that as much what is the current thing people care about I, it, I would say the most recent one is not immigration. It's abortion. Like, what is the most abortion? Ooh, abortion. That's Alabama. the current one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the most current the one. Most so current now abortion. you talk, give your opinion about anything having to do with uh, pro life or pro abortion. Pro choice. And yeah, that pro, yeah. That is the. Um, it is not the current. That just at the yeah, at the right time. This is if you want to have some conversations with people, post about it, and you will upset well, half the world probably both sides i think honestly the news cycle completely changed with this presidency before what, what, what it, it was used it be to be like more 
celebrities and like that's what was interesting but because of trump right right every news cycle is always something that he causes he, well if he because, because that's he's what's in the news so, yeah well yeah but like yeah his stuff is so controversial that that's always the hot topic in the news it's something that he's involved in but isn't it funny that when it's in it goes in like it literally is like people could still be appropriating cultures but they yeah. won't write about it because it's not going to get them views. Exactly. That's all that matters. Like, I know people are genuinely offended by it, but, like, people really care about their views. Like, yeah. that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's whatever. Remember when people were on. mad about ALS or, like, super into supporting ALS, like, like the ice bucket? Ice and bucket. How there was so much controversy, like, oh, you're just doing this for the views. I mean, who who's still, who's still looking that stuff up? Who still cares about ALS? Mm-hmm. I mean, other than the people who really did care about it. Or right. Talk about it. Who's, ta- who's right. talking about it other than right now? Yeah. If we didn't bring it up, I think people would not care. Oh, no. There it might even be some people who don't, don't even know what that is. That's true. They just challenge. Bucket challenge yeah. How yeah. long ago But was I'm that? talking about all those people. That was like, how many years? A couple years? Of years ago. More than that, right? I feel like it was longer than like that. Yeah, more than <laughs> three to five. Three Regardless, six. but all those people. I remember we, we did it. That's why, I mean, every, a lot of people did. And there was so much backlash. Like, you guys don't actually care about ALS. Yeah. You don't, like, this has nothing to do. You guys are how disrespectful. And that was, like, the hot topic. Yeah. Where are those people now? Where are they? Are, I don't see you guys posting about it. Like, you cared so much about ALS back then. Where are you now? Damn. I don't In know why I thought about this. But what if those people were deaf and they're sign languaging at you? You're trying to make a really dark it. joke right no, now. No, they're, they're just you're gonna get canceled. Asking about <laughs> ALS while doing ASL, American Sign Language. <laughs> Don't know why I thought about it. It's not even a funny joke. It's just like and had yeah, a mic well. on their hands doing ASMR. <laughs> mic on their hands. You guys are gonna get canceled, man. <laughs> it's like you guys are gonna get this show canceled. <laughs> It looks like you're trying to do ninjutsu or something. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what uh, sign language looks like to you. <laughs> I don't know. Damn. Oh, man. Anyway, that was PCness of the week, even though we weren't being very PC. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a very unpeaceiness. Um, yeah. that's, that's, that's a good way to end end this because <laughs> it's been like an hour. But um Okay. I'm I'm letting you do your thing. Go. What'd I say? Thanks for tuning in to the Off the Bill podcast. That's not true. I said follow us at. Are you? What are you doing right well, now? What, you didn't do the follow. I was gonna just do it. I said oh, we have this fight every single podcast. <laughs> I'm always gonna say no. I do sometimes, but I was literally <laughs> just gonna say thanks for tuning in to the Off the Pill podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Off the Pill and on Instagram Off the Pill podcast. You got it right. Nice. See for once. <laughs> but I really was going to say this. I didn't forget this time. Okay. Okay. Um, anything you want to plug? Yes. Check out blog. Yeah, check out the blog if you guys are traveling. Local and yeah. localadventurer.com. Local adve- adventurer? Adventurer. Spell okay. it for us just in case. I can't spell adventurer. Local adventurer like a person. Adventurer. Yeah, there you go. Oh <laughs> you, that's all you wanted. Oh <laughs> that's all you that's wanted. Not, well, you're getting yeah. us canceled. You're getting us canceled. Uh, I don't even want to breathe into the mic. That's all mad I am. Just sigh at this. <laughs> all right. In three, two, one. <laughs> I like Kevin's one last, the last week. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so just mad.